Okay, so after you have cut apart your pieces, you can kind of just um, separate them so that you can kind of see each one of the letters along the bottom. And notice over here, I have my Patrick, Mr. Krabs, and Squidward. And I kind of have them off to the side a little bit because we're just going to work one at a time. Our first example, of course, is SpongeBob. And if you want, you can glue each of the pieces up in the corner so that they're secure. All right, so for SpongeBob, what we're going to do is locate the individual allele. And by allele, I mean each of these individual little shapes. So I'm going to pull those off. And I have my S and my other S. These are the ones that are going to be separated into the sides over here as well as underneath SpongeBob's name based on the characteristic for SpongeBob. And remember, in our example, it said that SpongeBob was heterogeneous for being square. Square being dominant here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put one of the, the big S underneath Spongebob's name. And you can go along and do that with me. And since he's heterogeneous, he has a little s. If it was homogeneous for being square, he'd have two big s's. And in this case, I color-coded them as well to make it a little easier to see. And then Susie, we know, is round which is recessive, and in order for her to be recessive, we need to, make sure, we need to have both round genes, in this case, case, noted by the fact that we have a little s, which I made red over here. So now we have SpongeBob's alleles, heterogeneous for being square, and then Susie, who is round, and again, because it's recessive, both of her alleles have to be that recessive trait. Now what we do is we combine the two. So we have our big S and little s. So we look over here and find one of those, which I'm just going to choose this one over here and stick it there. When I combine Susie's S over here with SpongeBob's small s, I'm going to have two small s's. Again, a combination of these two. When I look at these two, I'm going to combine a big S and little s. And then finally, a combination of my last two alleles is what goes in this bottom corner, which is your two small s's. So now by taking a look at this, we notice that these two have a dominant gene over here, which means that there's a 50% chance that their offspring is going to be square. And the other two actually both have the recessive gene, so 50-50 shot of being square or being round with their offsprings. And we'll go through the next part of it um, in the Class Connect.